Today on Helms Botany, we'll be going over how we're trying to go about making content accessible. So you can do all kinds of great things to your system, to your CMS layer, uh, to make things accessible. You can even do things to your text editor. But what about all this content in here? Uh, the text editor is actually writing HTML, and you know sometimes users just write flat HTML as it is. So you can write inaccessible HTML, which basically invalidates the whole process anyway. Uh, so here's the way that we're solving this. We've kind of got three approaches. The first is in the editor itself. So we've taken away options that would be inaccessible or could lead to obvious inaccessibility types of things. Uh, you can't just go making things whatever color. You know, we, you know, locking, limiting the number of colors that you can have for things really you shouldn't be coloring certain text anyway. Um, enforcing that tags are you know strong instead of B or bold, um, stripping out certain tags. So these types of things happen in the editor initially. Um, another nice little thing, if you have paragraphs, they should be wrapped. And you know, modern editors allow you to do this automatically. So you see that wrapped in the P tag to offset it. Um, it's not gonna throw down 20 breaks, that kind of thing. So let's, let's try and trigger an accessibility issue here. So I'll copy this text paste it there and bold this. So if this was actually a heading, my cool heading, it shouldn't be offset and just you know, told to be strong uh, because it probably should be a heading <laughs> using the actual H tags. And so what the system can do in the, the uh, third layer is an actual accessibility scrub to say, hey, uh, I know this was going to be an accessibility issue, so you better fix it. And so we can make this H2, and we'll hit save. And so there's a text editor limiting what you can put on the page, but obviously you can still make you know, logical flaws like that. Um, and so now this is an H2, which is gonna pass through a screen reader. It's a lot happier about it. Um, you can also run an accessibility test on the document, and this will give you more suggestions. So um, the Quail, this is using something called Quail API, and in Drupal 6, this is implemented through accessible content. Um, this will give you suggestions about, you know, things to watch for. So if you're using P tags, you know, it's saying, oh, hey, uh, if you have tables in here, make sure that they're, you know, displaying tabular data. And it's throwing that in because I have a lot of structural elements in the page. Um, this heading, all H2s, you know, make sure this is not purely for formatting. So make sure this is actually, you know, a heading that makes sense in terms of the hierarchy of the page. Uh, little suggestions like that to try and help you think more critically about your content uh, from an accessibility perspective. So I mentioned that was the third level of accessibility testing. So let's see how that actually is implemented. Um, and then we'll go to the second level uh, because that's applied in between. So you'll see in the system there's accessibility tests and guidelines. Uh, in Drupal 7, these will be entities. Unfortunately, right now they are um, nodes, as we'll see. Uh, so we'll go and edit a page just to see what an example implementation of accessible content is. So you see there's accessibility checking, um, and then you have different options. So enable accessibility checking, obviously. Ignore errors that involve the document or header. So I have this so that we're making the assumption that I can't, on page save, correct issues with the theme. Um, so obviously you would need other tools to audit the theme uh, ahead of time. Uh, you know, whether or not to apply filters. So this is important and we'll get into the second level um, in the next video, which is the HTML purifier step, which allows you to create whitelists and blacklists. Uh, so whether or not to apply those things. Uh, so in you know, uh, Eli Media sense, this would be like converting you know, uh, a video text to a video. Uh, applying wiki markup and things like that, you know, actually assessing that stuff before attempting to run these tests. And then this one, which is what stopped the page before, if you notice severe errors, which it's only going to trigger severe errors if it's things that are blatantly obvious to it, such as um, was shown with the heading or uh, tables, you know, not having captions, things like that. Um, you can then have these other levels, which is what shows up on the, uh, the little accessibility view. And you can actually pick the guideline you want to stick to. So, um, you know, in a few months when we say, hey, we're going to do AAA instead of AA, we've already got that accounted for so that we can switch to it. You can do this per content type. Um, and then I've actually talked to the author. In the future, you'll be able to do it per role. 